Hey there, this is Pastor Guy. I'm coming to you tonight with uh, an interesting challenge or an interesting request or an interesting opportunity for us as the church to lock arms in prayer and in fasting with many other churches around the world. See, our world right now, as we come into uh, the weekend, we're coming to Good Friday and Holy Saturday and uh, Resurrection Sunday, our world is facing health and economic challenges beyond what most of us have ever experienced. And right now, more than any time in our life, we need to seek the Lord. I trust that you're doing that already, but we need to seek the Lord. We need to be united in prayer. So I've uh, been kind of uh, trying to decide if I wanted to do this or not and, and partner with this. And I think it's something that's so important because we as the people of God need to be a people of prayer. We are. I mean, who's going to call on the name of the Lord but the people of God? So we together, I want to challenge you that on Good Friday, April 10th, that's tomorrow, if you're seeing this as I post it or before Friday, Good Friday 2020, a lot of churches across denominations, across the country and in parts of the world, I'm sure, are united in prayer and fasting and seeking God's mercy, seeking God's healing and I want to encourage you to do this. Now, this might be something that is difficult for you, might be something that's totally out of your wheelhouse, something you've never really delved into. Um, but I, I want to say, and I, and I know that not everybody can fast for, for health reasons, for employment reasons, for whatever reasons that may be. I know that not everybody can participate in fasting. We got to be careful. We got to be wise. Um, but I want to invite you together with Christians across the nations to humble yourself and seek him. So the challenge for us is to unite in prayer and fasting, uh, or at least prayer, for the day of Good Friday, April 10th, and, and, and trust God in that. Now, Fasting may be something that's a little bit unfamiliar to you, so let me just give you a quick rundown on why we fast, a little bit of, of history of this in Scripture. So the nature of fasting, I mean, fasting in and of itself is, is what you would expect. It is abstaining from food, possibly drink, possibly not drink. A lot of people fast, and they, uh, they still have orange juice, uh, still have coffee. I'm probably still going to have coffee. Physically, physically, I think it's as long as you keep it under 100 calories, uh, then you can consider yourself still fasting. Um, but you can look into all that. But basically what fasting is, it is abstaining from food for a limited period of time for a religious commitment, a devotion, an expression of repentance. Fasting happens a lot throughout the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, Jesus fasted. Jesus uh, taught the disciples to, to fast. The apostles fasted. And, and fasting comes with a lot of various uh, reasons, a lot of different reasons why uh, why Christians fast, why, why Jewish people fast, why Christians fast. Some of those reasons are, you know, uh, a lot of times in the Old Testament, they, they fasted for bereavement. They were mourning, so they they fasted. Sometimes uh, people would fast out of distress. They would fast out of um, penitence, uh, as Daniel identifies himself with the sins of the people. Um, the apostles fasted for when they were seeking guidance. Uh, in Acts, Acts chapter 13, you can read about the church receiving direction through the Holy Spirit while fasting. Um, and sometimes fasting just indicates an earnestness just an earnestness for, for asking God to move in a situation. So what, what we're doing is, is we are joining together and fasting for another reason, which is seeking God's intervention. I mean, we're seeking for God to move in our world because we've got so much going on, so many questions, so many fears, so many p uh, p possibilities of, of additional sickness. It's just such, a, such a, an interestingly dark time, but yet a hopeful time as we come into Easter. So what we're seeking after is God's intervention in our world. I want to point out one uh, one passage uh, that I find interesting in the book of Ezra, this is a f uh, Ezra 8.21. This is fasting 
and prayer for protection. So we're praying for God to intervene. We're praying for God to protect. We're praying for God to to bring uh, an answer, for God to bring a vaccine, for God to bring protection to our families and to our people. In Ezra 8.21 says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before God and seek from him a safe journey for ourselves, for our children, and for all of our goods. So this is an example of seeking God in prayer and fasting. It's afflicting yourself with physical pain and and reminding yourself and reminding God humbly to say, God, you are my provider, and I ask, Lord, that you will intervene. So don't be afraid to to put your own comfort, to put your, your, your own your own physical nourishment on hold to say, listen, God, I, I, I'm asking you to intervene and I'm, and I'm doing so with this attitude that is appropriate for fasting, this attitude of humility and this attitude of repentance. We come to fasting with these kind of attitudes because fasting in and of itself, if you're just fasting to fast, or if you're just, it just becomes a negative practice. It's not something that's really going to be life giving. It's just going to be, hey, I had 3,000 less calories this week, and this is working out for me. And it might work out for you spiritually, but it's not, or, or physically, but not spiritually, because we need to approach fasting with humility, with repentance, and just a, a way that we approach in worship and trust God. So, so the way that I will handle this, that I would invite you to to handle this, is I, I am simply going to take a a twenty four hour period, which 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 will basically mean uh, I'm going to eat dinner tonight when I get home, uh, which will be uh, probably uh, probably after you're watching this. I'm going to eat dinner tonight when I get home, and then I'm going to abstain from food. Uh, for and, and you're not supposed to tell people about it. I'm just doing this for the sake of the video. You're not supposed to run around telling people that you're fasting. This isn't a big p- press release. It's not that kind of thing. This is this is to, to invite you to this. Um, but I'm, I'm going to eat dinner tonight, and, and then I'm going to set solid food aside until dinner on Friday night. Uh, so that's going to be a 24-hour period. So it's not the block of Good Friday, it's going to be a 24-hour period, which is similar to how a, a Jewish Sabbath would work. Um, and so uh, so I'll eat dinner tonight, and then from, from that point until 24 hours later, I'll have dinner again. And between that time, um, the only thing that I'll be be drinking, I'm, I'm going to have, I'm probably just going to have water and, and black coffee. That That's just kind of what I'll do. I, I Give or take the coffee, I don't know. But I, I'm going to have water and coffee, and any time that I would be preparing or eating or cleaning up food I'm going to set that side uh, set that time aside and focus on God focus in humility and in repentance on seeking God's intervention in, in our society seeking God's intervention in the health and the economic but mostly the health concerns of of the world and and pray for those who are who are at ground zero uh, of this and and pray for those who are working for a cure, working for a vaccine, working for an answer uh, and and pray that God will give them breakthroughs that God will protect us and, and I'm also going to pray for our church family and and for my family and pray that that God protects us and, and I'm going to do so in, in from a posture of fasting where I say, God, I trust you with this you are my sustenance you are all that i need and i pray lord that that as we work through this lord that you will find us answers so um i would love to hear from you if you're going to participate in this you don't have to tell me uh fasting is certainly a pr- a, a personal thing but if you if you feel that that you want to to communicate with me i don't i don't really need to know but um but you feel free to, to dialogue with me if you'd like to. Uh, if you have any questions, if it's something that you've never done before, uh, don't be afraid to to reach out. So uh, with that, I'm going to let you go. And uh, if you have any questions about what fasting looks like, any questions about why, uh, and uh, you know, I can lead you to some additional scriptures as I pointed some out. But this is something that God always calls for us to, 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 to in times of desperation, in times of big questions, in times of big challenges, 
God invites us to marry prayer and fasting. And and it's not and it's not you, you know this is just this is just about uh, about us humbling ourselves and repenting and, and and saying God please intervene. This is this is prayer. This is passionate prayer and believing that the people of God can call on God and God will move. He wants to hear your prayers. He wants to hear the longings of your heart. Because God can absolutely fix this. And don't don't buy into the lie that prayer doesn't change things. Don't don't buy into the lie that prayer and fasting can't change God's mind. God's got purpose in this and we believe that his purposes and his will are far higher than ours. But all throughout Scripture, when God's people, I mean, take Moses for all throughout Scripture, when God's people call on his name, he listens. And sometimes he changes what's about to happen. And sometimes he says, not right now, not right now. Our job is to trust. Our job is to call on his name. He wants you to. He wants you to. And God can move on our behalf and and love and protect our society as we know he does so with that i love you and i uh i will be checking back in as we go uh have a really have a really good friday yeah it's gonna be a good friday it's gonna be a good friday i am i'm praying for you i'm i'm with you i'm for you i love you bye